Yeah, I got to get better at, at my time spent. <laughs> <laughs> what is yours? <laughs> uh, see, I'm not a very entertaining YouTuber, Gem, so I have to put more work into yes, to, to make my are. episodes better. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what's your time played? I'm at 11 days. 11 days? Is any of that AFK? Not really, no. Etho. I got you, four episodes out. <laughs> do you ever love? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, that's worse. That is worse that you only have four episodes out. Can you get off the server and do some editing? My God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, I will say, though, all my episodes have been like 40, 50 minutes. I got to get back to the 20 They've minutes. been huge. I got I, I to gotta get back to the 20s again. I haven't even watched your most recent one because I looked at how long it was. I was like, I just can't. <laughs> I know. I it's a problem. Don't have that long. <laughs> yeah. So hello, everybody. And welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm still having a little trouble finding my sweet spot. You know, the, that perfect balance between... How much I play on the server and, and like when I start making my video because <laughs> uh, usually I like to play on the server a bit before I start putting the video together just so it has some direction to it. And I've been finding because like so much of stuff is happening on the server. But when I start putting my video together, like 20 more things happen on the server as uh, as I put it together. And then it's like, oh, I got so much to include. <laughs> and I don't want to leave anything out. But, you know, I've also been spending a lot of time hanging out with the hermits, goofing around, having a good time, which has been great. Uh, but uh there's something else as well. <laughs> this season of Hermitcraft, I actually went into it with a plan, believe it or not. And I've been I've been working on this plan. Now, as many of you know, I don't have the best track record with big projects. I got a massive project I want to do this season. So, in order to make this happen, I realized I need to set a strong foundation for the season early on here. So I'm doing like a lot of resource gathering early on here, farm building, infrastructure building. I want to get our storage worked out. And, uh, you know, a lot of these like time consuming kind of difficult grindy projects I'm trying to get done early on the season. I want to try to get our base building done early so that later in a couple months or so when we transition to this big project is going to go smoothly and there's a better chance I'll actually get it done. Now, I'm also trying to be very careful not to leave too many loose ends behind as we go through the season here. So you remember that big storage mess we had here? I got that clean up. It was a it was a big pain organizing it. And normally that's something I would probably put off and uh you know those loose ends they start to pile up and then eventually I got to deal with them and I don't want that to happen this season <laughs> so I, I organized it I got it all put away here and I know this room looks horrible with all these shulker boxes but these aren't that bad actually these are mostly organized like this is not like random stuff for the most part this is like I went and I got like 20 shulkers of sand that I turned to glass so that we could sell it at our shop I made a bunch of TNT I mined up a bunch of terracotta, like six things of terracotta here. Just doing resource gathering, you know, I, I also went to like the end, fought a wither there just to get some end stone, even though I don't need it now. We'll need it for our massive project eventually. And it's just kind of nice to get that in our inventory, in our ender chest in case we ever do need end stone for some reason. Of course, one of my early season goals here is to get our storage room filled up so we can get the maximum effectiveness out of our shulker loaders. But that requires an incredible amount of resources, a lot of crafting, a lot of organizing to get that done. And we're probably at like 20% now after I spent a, a bunch of time on it. And uh, it, it's getting there, but we got a long ways to go with it. All right, everybody. Now check this out. This is so cool. This is an example of setting up infrastructure that's going to benefit us for the rest of the season here. As long as we're in this world, every time I use this, it's going to make me happy. <laughs> Instead of keeping our rockets or our food or other consumables in a chest where we have to like fumble around manually looking for them, maybe we run out, I got to figure out where the rest of them are and that kind of thing and, uh, you know, craft them and all that stuff. We're going to have these quick dispensing stations. I did something like this in season seven of Hermitcraft and I absolutely loved it where you just hold right click on this comparator. The longer you hold down right click, the more rockets you'll get, for example. Every time we click it, we're going to get eight when it's fully filled up. Um, and that way you can control how many you get, depending on how many you need. And it, it's just really nice, right? <laughs> and now that we have the, the auto crafter, we can actually make it even better. Uh, it's really simple as well. Is this an observer detecting the comparator? Goes up to two droppers and then up to two more droppers. And you just keep repeating that pattern 
uh, for however many droppers you want. The more you have, the faster they'll dispense them. And then we got a bunch of hoppers going into those droppers to auto refill them from a big storage unit like a chest. And then we got an auto crafter hooked up to that chest for the rockets. So we just have to get it going here. And look at this. So it's going to take our, our sugar cane, craft that into paper, that goes into here. And then we have one for gunpowder. And then that goes, combines together in this one, makes our rockets, they go down into our. Our dispensing station down there. Uh, oh. Problem? Oh, I guess this can fill up. That's never happened before. <laughs> All right, I got to make some adjustments. Uh, okay, let's shut it down for now. Okay, I made a little adjustment here. So now the wire goes up above here. So it doesn't interact with this crafter. But instead, it checks if this runs out of paper. And then it tells this crafter to make more. Uh, we're gonna add a couple more here. I want one for ender pearls for sure. Maybe one for bone meal. Maybe one for TNT. I, we'll, we'll figure out the rest of them, but let's go get our ender pearls. Oh, look at this. We just hopped into the end here and we're getting greeted by a shower of XP. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I haven't been to this uh, enderman farm. Uh, just yet. Every season of Hermitcraft, Jevin makes an enderman farm like within the first two weeks. And this season, to change things up, uh, I think he did it in the first week. <laughs> Alright, this is a good sign. When you can't pick up the XP fast enough in an Enderman farm, that means it's a good Enderman farm. Look at this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's a good sign. They refill pretty quickly here. Looking good. Alright, so we're gonna fill up, I think, nine Shulkers of Ender Pearls. And we got it loaded up, so let's give it a try. That should give us 16. Yeah, perfect. Ooh. <laughs> we got Ender Pearls again. Free? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, check it out here. We are at the shopping district, and that's the big thing that's been happening this week on Hermitcraft. Everybody's getting their shops down in the new shopping district. We got Corellis' uh, candle shop there. We got Ren's beacon shop. I think XB made a grocery store here, and he uh, is anxiously waiting for people to come by. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, Mumbo's item frame shop, and there's like Skizzle's wood shop. Joel just made a uh, like glow squid thing, and you know there's big shops, there's there's little shops, there's all kinds of shops all over the place. Little pop up shops happening, and as many of you know, I have well, I don't, not really, I don't have a shopping addiction. Uh, I I can control myself. Um, nope, put those away, put those away. <laughs> it's tempting though, but this season of Hermitcraft, I am vowing, you know, I, I am going to control myself. I'm not going to just do impulse buys all the time. I'm going to actually try and make my diamonds last and spread them out throughout the whole season. 400 diamonds, lifetime supply, but you can never deplete my resources. You're about to always leave at least a few shulkers behind. Yes. Yes. I'll make sure of that. But that's, uh, okay. that's, that's like all my diamonds. Oh my goodness. I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 45 yeah, diamond get, blocks. Get your shops up at 45 diamond blocks. Yeah, that, that's about right. I'm rounding up here too, just, just to be yeah, fair. I appreciate it. Does that sound like a deal? Oh, that sounds like a deal to me. <laughs> 45 diamond blocks. I might have made a big yes. mistake here, but lifetime <laughs> supply. I have a piece of paper here for you. It is signed by myself. You've already paid me, so there's no need to put down the price or anything. Oh, snap. Very good. Thank you, Beef. Sweet. Thank you. I might be the richest person you on the server are, right yeah. now. <laughs> That's a lot of diamonds. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm going to go get, help myself to some shulker boxes, actually. Go for it. I just restocked. I just got something amazing. <gasps> What'd you get? 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 Look at that. Look oh. at that. <laughs> I'm very excited oh. about this. Oh my. Wow. How do I, you know what? I'm out of here. <laughs> no, my, my paper. <laughs> my paper. No. Oh, he had to How come back one cost? day. How Ooh. much did it cost? You got to tell me. Firstborn child. I don't know what. Pretty much all my diamonds. Do you need diamonds, Etho? I am poor now. If you want to help okay. me out, maybe buy some frog lights. I, I am, I, I feel like I'm rich, so. Uh, you can have these. Oh, thank you, Cleo. There you go. You're welcome. Oh, that's great. I'm, I feel I feel like I'm rich, cause I've got like 
you do have stacks a, of diamonds already. You do yes. have a pretty <laughs> awesome shop here, I gotta say. I do. <laughs> I do enjoy the shop. It's a good shop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Feel free to spend them on concrete. So let's pay a little visit to False's shop A next to ours here. You know, she's uh, she's got concrete for sale. My concrete box is empty. All right, we filled her up. Do you own this well, as well? About, about that. I do, yeah. Oh, my man, business, I've, I've been know. buying out all your hay bales. Oh, is it you? <laughs> well, I just got some more diamonds from Cleo, so this is this is wonderful. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good job. No, not this shop. Don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so I gave Etho diamonds to give myself more work. Right, understood. And we got Joe's bookstore over here, nice and cheap actually, just one diamond each. <laughs> Wait. Oh, it's random. Wait, I can choose, right? I can choose. Saw so Riptide 2. Joe, what are you doing, man? Nobody's gonna buy Riptide 1. Alright, I'll buy this one because my my Trident has Riptide 2 on already. I will be your second customer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. hey. I would like to purchase some flight rockets, uh, one diamond per stack. I will need to borrow one diamond from you, Iskel. Okay, <laughs> yep, that is fair. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, you made a purchase. <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> Iskel 35. 85, 85. <laughs> It does look like three from this side. <laughs> I don't know. It does not. From this and angle, it's, also, it's a three. It does, it from, does not, and it's also perfect. From this centered. angle, it's also a three. The only angle yes. it's an eight is like dead on and barely. <laughs> don't steal Dylan now. You've already raided him. Whoa. Okay, what he's low on health. I'm getting from? off. Why are you killing him? H how did that even happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You opened the box and then he got squished and sad. For science, we gotta try it again. Huh. I don't know what that what was. I think you might have smacked him with your sword. No, no, he, he got squished. There, here, He's... it's happening again. <gasps> Whoa! Oh. oh, he almost died. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Why didn't you, like, it happened again and you didn't get off? You I didn't realize he was it. taking a bajillion damage every time he took a hit. Dude, he, I he was, was a half a heart there. That was a close call. Three, two, one. Oh, that's right, a lot of TNT. <laughs> so oh, cool. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> We're back at base again here. I forgot to show you all the map. That's right, we did another snapshot in time. I'm trying to do this every month so we can see how the area changes over time. And uh, a month ago, this is how our, our area looked. Remember, we were missing the corner on our house. Oh, Cleo just died. <laughs> and I got that filled in now. And most of the stuff I've been doing is underground, though, recently. So there's not a whole lot there. But you can see uh, Tango's foundation for his factory appeared. We got Pearl's area got massive updates with the uh, pathing. And her house is like two, three times larger on the map here. Big, big improvement there. Uh, Skizzle's pyramid showed up. And then we also got... Uh, Cub, he, he got his firework factory going. Now, I gotta say, I really do like this location we settled down in. At first, I just picked the spot to be close to, like, Tango and Pearl and the other hermits here. But the more time I spend here, the more I realize just how good of, like, a geographical location it is, how many good things it has going for it. We got the jungle, of course, <laughs> which I love. Uh, but it's also got the, the double cave spawner down below. It's got cold biomes nearby, like, there is... Uh, mountains near here so if we need snow or if we want to set up an ice farm we're going to be able to do that nearby there's goats up there and a bunch of different animals because there's so many different biomes here we also have the height variation going on for us so this is like a high spot it allows us to make some more interesting like build stuff terraforming in the future hopefully uh, but we also have low spots for like our creeper farm to get better rates down below here we have the water if we're making our squid farm the only body of water near us as well, so we get incredible spawn rates down there. <laughs> and look at this, I also realized, just randomly, we have a little sliver of plains uh, just over here, this little section, and then it turns to like water, the river there, that turns to forest up there, and jungle this way, birch forest that way. So this is a tiny little spot, but it's perfect for what we got going on down below here. Uh, this allows us to do something cool without having to leave our base. Did you wonder what was behind the door here? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, what could it be? What could it be? 
it's another door. <laughs> uh, yeah. So just over this way towards the, the plains biome. Uh, what do we have? What do we have, everybody? A bunch of doors and we're able to make a flower farm here. So plains is perfect because you get the, the dandelions. Here, let's turn it down real quick here. You get your poppies, you get your blue flowers, you get the gray flowers, the oxide daisies, and the azurite bluets. So it's one of the best uh, flower farm locations. And now we got it right by our base. So that's cool. So I set one of these up. Um, this is also good for farming a bunch of other things in the game. Yeah, so if we swap out the grass block above the bone meal dispenser here with Nylium, we can use it to grow the nether plants as well. And this is an eight by seven in dimension, the grass area here. One of these sides has grass next to the pistons and one is uh, empty. So on that side, you put the other Nylium and then you just start it up. We got the mushrooms and all the nether plants and stuff. Making a flower farm like this is super simple as well. You just have an observer detecting when the grass moves above here and then you uh, send power to the left and the right of that. One goes to the dispenser and then you run the, the power up to both sides of the pistons. They're so simple to make, I actually ended up making five different ones. So we got the one at our base, we got one in a swamp, and then there's this flower forest by uh, Greens here. Uh, let's see if I can remember the location. It's not well, well marked or anything. Oh, there it is right there. So we got two of them down here. This is for the tulips. Not sure there's any meal left. Yeah, so we get red and orange tulips here. And then this one gets us the white and the pink tulips. Uh huh. And then we got an Allium uh, flower farm down here as well. But uh, anyways, I'm in the mood to do a little bit of building, everybody. So let's get to it here. So I think it was back episode two or something. I marked out this path to go to Tango's place and I didn't have the resources back then. I haven't had the time since to get it done, <laughs> but I think we can do it today if we if we do it quickly. Uh huh. So I think this tunnel for sure needs to get bigger. So We'll get that going. Uh, but you see, I kind of leveled it out here. We'll get a nice windy path around the, the bay area. All right, might want to go a little bit bigger than this. I'll, I'll think about it for a second. But let's uh, let's check this out. So I got some stuff together. Yeah, over here. So I'm thinking the way we're going to do the path is we're going to use packed mud as our primary. So down the middle, I'll just run the, the packed mud. I think in the very center of the packed mud, like the highest traffic area on the path, we're going to use the brown mushrooms. It's a smooth block match as well. And it'll be like uh, the area that people walk the most, you know. And then on the outside, I think anyone's going to sleep. I'm one of the main sleepers on the server. So if I ever don't sleep, I always worry. <laughs> because people get into the routine of not sleeping when, I, when I'm around, right? And then it's like, oh, man. When I need it, nobody's got my back. I think we're going to do rooted dirt on the sides of that, next to the packed mud probably, and then even further, like the area where you walk and the grass kind of dies, we'll do coarse dirt. Uh-huh. And then I also prepared some bricks and some granite, which I think we're going to use as a retaining wall uh, going along, along here. Now, you got to be careful with bricks. I find if you use too many bricks, it looks really bad. But if you just have a few, I think we'll just go too high maybe. We'll try that out. We'll mix in some granite in places, maybe some terracotta, get some plants in front of that. I think it's going to look pretty good. Uh, I am going to get rid of this tree and maybe Tango's wheat because this is like where I want the path to go, right? Yeah, he won't mind. He's on vacation. <laughs> All right, I don't think it's quite wide enough here to do what I want either. So we're probably going to have to expand out a bit and maybe take some of the cliff away too, just to make it a bit nicer. Usually when I do paths, I find it works best if I don't try to mix in all the blocks to begin with. I, I just put down the main path material first, and that helps me gauge like when I add the other stuff, how it looks with that, like how it's developing. This also allows us to get the shape a little bit more refined without being distracted by the other blocks as well. Let me give you a little update here. So we made the tunnel a little bit bigger in here. I think this feels a lot better now. Uh, I've been working on the shape of the path, and I'm pretty happy with it now. I think it's a good width, a good good bend to it. You know, a little bit of character. It's not perfectly straight or anything. 
and I've been messing with the wall. I think maybe I put a little too much granite and stuff in there. But uh, the other thing is, it just looks a little strange, right? Why is that? Well, I think it's a little too, a little too perfect. We're gonna try and mix in some stairs, some slabs, some fences, and also I want to do a little thing where, like, every second block we have a little jag in it, you know, like that. And sometimes we might go down as well. So we're we're gonna mm, actually, how do we do it? I think we gotta go like here instead if we want to go down. So we're trying to transition it from like two and a half blocks down to one and a half sometimes, and just like mix it up a bit. Uh huh. All right, maybe we go down here. And then that's fine. Well, it looks a little strange. Let's get a stair in there. Sure. We can use some walls as well to give it a little bit of irregularity between uh, the corners, you know? Just in a few places. You don't have to do it everywhere. Okay, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, just try stuff, you know? See what it looks like. Yeah, it's probably fine, right? Now I think we look for any areas that have a high cluster of the packed mud and we try to get the rooted dirt to go into that, maybe? Maybe is an idea. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody. Well, we probably spent about two hours working on the pathing here, and it's in a much better place now. I do need, like, another two, three hours at least to finish it, though. We did make it come out uh, in front of our base here, though, which is nice. We kind of got an idea of how it's going to go now. Um, so this is kind of what I would call level one pathing in front of our house, where you just focus on getting the the shape, the width of it, the position all figured out. Um, so I think that's fine. But then over here, we went more into the level two pathing where you actually start doing texturing and adding little details to it. And I think this looks way better <laughs> over here. This actually feels pretty good to me. Uh, so I went for more of a rough, like overgrown look to it because it is a mountain passage as well. So you gotta think there's probably not gonna be a lot of people coming through here, especially with Tango on vacation. You know, he's, it's pretty much just me right now, <laughs> uh, trampling down the path here. Uh, but yeah, this is this is good. We added in some some brick structures, broken down fences throughout in a few places. We got one by Tango's there. I do like how this looks with the wheat on both sides, actually. So I'm gonna leave this. You know, Tango can change it if he wants, but uh, yeah, I kind of like that. And then uh, what else? Um, the thing that it's missing. We we do have hidden lighting, by the way, as well. But the thing that's missing to like really complete this to make it feel a lot better is some unique structures to it. So this is all kind of like background decorative stuff, right? But in order to really s sell the scene, make it feel better, you need s stuff for your eyes to focus on. So, for example, we have this tree that was here and I got thinking, you know, maybe I make like a U shape out of the hill here. Put some benches like a rest stop kind of thing and then tear down this tree, build an actual nice looking custom tree over top the benches. I think that would be really good for this area. You could add things like uh, chain fences or bamboo fences along the path here. Um, it would really help if we had some more interesting terrain like boulders and, you know, rougher stuff, you know, uh, would be cool. Maybe some pathing down below here as well. Um, wooden structures to support uh, our cave, maybe another custom tree in this flower bed thing. I just threw some berries in there for now. You know, stuff like that really helps to finish things off and make it feel better. But that's gonna have to wait till another episode because we gotta go check out the shopping district, everybody. Oh, we stole some uh, stone, actually. Very good, and I'm guessing no glass sold. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking, looking about the same as I left it last time. Glass, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those commodities that's gonna really take off soon, I'm sure. Mm-hmm, let's see if Joe sold any of his. Oh my goodness, he actually sold some. That's so unfair. What? <laughs> How did he sell some? Okay, we sold some of the yellow. That's good. Uh, one stack of the green. And... Oh, okay. Purple's the big seller for some reason. Yeah, hi. Are you having a hard time getting in? I've, I've constructed a wall. There's no way in anymore. It, go over here by Joel's arch. There. It, oh, there's, thank there's, goodness. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I got stuck in the river. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, it's under construction. Whoa. You know, we're starting to, to build up the walls and the streets on the uh, cyberpunk city here, so it's coming along. All right, yeah, a lot yeah, has man. changed. Even you, you, you got fancy armor. Look, look, look. See what we're using. Oh, you're using streets. frog lights for the roads. That is excellent. That's a great choice, Impulse. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Except uh, I'm out of diamonds because that was 
a lot. I bought 13 stacks of the Polarcent ones. Uh huh. And I only I only had 39 diamonds left in my pocket, and I'm broke now. So uh, gotta go mining then, huh? I was, well, I was hoping not to. Uh, <laughs> how would you feel if I traded you the brown glass permit in exchange for use of your frog lay farm? Not saying you got to go collect it and I'm oh, just going to okay. get it. You're going to put actually... the work in? Okay. Mm-hmm. Lifetime deal kind of thing. I'm, I'm okay mm-hmm. with those. I feel like it's maybe skewed a little bit in your favor, though. Um, I'll, I'll do it under mm-hmm. one condition, Impulse. I think you got to be my... My frog light spokesman, my my advertiser. Frog light spokesman. All right. Uh, should I start now? <laughs> sure. You got something in mind? Cub, have you seen how amazing frog lights are inside the cyberpunk city? Have I you have. Seen it? Yeah, they're, I've seen they're it. the most amazing light you can possibly get. I mean, what other lights look that beautiful and are vibrant with lots of color? I walked I, in on I, a deal I... for frog lights here, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well okay let me i'm just gonna give you free samples impulse i'm giving these to everybody okay. right now on the server okay. i just went to ethos so that's a good idea yeah, i should you give are. you some Thanks. free sample stuff maybe to give Thanks. people visit the fireworks shop in the shopping district how'd my spiel with the with frog lights go you, you interested in frog lights now yeah oh I, I i'm gonna need a lot too so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> see, see, you good got this. one good you got this. one just like that yeah, yeah yeah perfect yeah you got it perfect. you got this I think keep, you double keep, dismounted your horse and it broke my door, but that's fine. Keep negotiating. Yeah, okay. Oh, fix. Ah, self-fixing. Woo. Let's go. Okay, okay. Uh, you demonstrate your skills there. That's that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think we could make He's this work He's probably out. heading straight to your shop right now, right? All right. I, I, I think I'm good with that. You know, you, you throw yes. a little frog light advertisement in your everyday conversation every once in a while. I, I think we got a, we got a good deal there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I see it working away. Okay, I'll be happy to uh, AFK any chance I get at this. You know, we can we can take turns, and well, then I'll just skim a little off the top. You know, so it's incredibly fast. <laughs> um, oh, usually I'm only here for like five ten minutes at a time, and I got the chest full. So holy cow! So, okay, so yeah, you'll need to expand the storage if you want to stay longer. Sure. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or, or come up with something. Uh, if we go down below, okay. I'll show you the situation right now. Yeah, if you don't mind me modifying it as needed, that's cool. I can do that. So just down here. Now, the tricky thing is, though, it's like it's faster than hopper speed, right? So if you're just doing item filters connected to it, it's probably not going to keep up. So mm. I, I just have a hodgepodge here of, like, two double chests. Okay. And a bunch of hoppers into All right. them. I'll give it a go, and uh-huh. uh, I'll see if uh, I feel like bumping up the collection speed or, uh, if we need to. Otherwise, I'll just kind of, like, stop here for a few minutes every yeah. time I visit my gold farm, you know? Yeah, either works. Perfect. This is going to be a great deal, hopefully, for both of us. Oh, I grabbed them all. <laughs> First step of becoming the spokesman, Impulse. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> With our powers combined, we're going to sell a lot of frog lights, I think. <laughs> Perfect. Looking forward to it. And we also did a little permit trade with Pearl. Right. So I got a mossy cobble permit. All Can right. I please have the one, the, the fabled one in your hand. Oh my gosh. You wanted sp- permits is that? Spore Blossom, right? I would love Spore Blossom, even though it should be in my permit anyway. Thank you very much. I don't know. I don't know. Because you got dyes, right? And the, you can't make dyes from no. that. Yeah, but the permit says all dyes and flowers. Oh, okay. sure flower. oh, very good. Pearl got us our shulker boxes for the mail system ready here. The idea behind those white shulker boxes is we're trying to hand them out to all the hermits that have uh, mail systems installed. They're supposed to be like their envelopes, right, for sending packages. When uh, Tango and I designed the mailbox system, we tried to think of all of the possible sources of friction that might prevent a hermit from wanting to use the mail system and one of the big ones we thought of was like they're not going to want to spend their own shulkers to to mail stuff to to each other because they're not going to get those back right (laughs) shulkers are kind of valuable early on in the season so we we got a bunch of shulkers from doc and we're supplying them to all the hermits to use for mailing stuff for free but they're not supposed to use them for their own personal use so if you see anybody using those white boxes you tell postmaster pearl she'll get on their case right away uh-huh. 
So how's the mail system going here? Well, Pearl's got this cool board installed at the post office that shows you everybody that has a mailbox uh, working right now. And you can see we got probably half of them installed now, so it's going pretty good. And yeah, Tango added something pretty cool to the mail system recently as well, a custom uh, mail message. <laughs> Check this out. You've got mail. Aha, uh -huh. so it's the, the AOL, uh, you got mail thing from the movie, you know? Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's just a, a custom music disc, so let's go in the back here. I actually need to like collect records to get this though, which is a problem because I've used all of mine and I've gotten a few from Hermits, but I need a lot more of these. <laughs> You've got mail. But it, it goes in a jukebox in a loop here. But yeah, let's go head down here, check out how things are working in the network. Um, I can install these, I think, in like 20 to 30 minutes now, so it's going much faster than when we first started. They were like an hour to two hours when we first started uh, putting these in. <laughs> it was like uh, a little scary, actually, that we would never get this done. But it's going good. Uh, I think um, one of the big things I've added recently to this was the lost mail system. So whenever a package goes by this hopper, it picks up one of these lost mail tags. And then it does a full loop around the track clockwise, right? And then it returns... Um, to this junction if it does the full loop without going into anybody's portal that means like it's it's got no stamp it doesn't know where it's going right so then it ends up going in our lost mail junction here um, we detect that with this right goes this way and right now I just drop it in a hole <laughs> it's good to see there's no packages down here uh, eventually we'll probably route those over to the post office though I put this right next to it um, so that's good I've been having trouble with the chunk loaders, like one out of 50 times, just randomly, it seemed like we were losing one of the items that's supposed to like bounce back and forth. One of the shears would just randomly disappear, and I would go through the portal looking for it, and it would never be there. <laughs> so I don't know what was going on, I don't know if they were getting linked to some random portal in the overworld that I don't know about and I can't find, or if it's like the lava thing for lighting the portals was burning the item somehow I don't know I, I've just I've shut this off and just kept them lit for now to test it and so far I haven't had any problems with uh, the item disappearing since then so I'm just uh, keeping an eye on it for now this is my dripstone farm it does farm dripstone but also I thought turn it into a little mini game try and run away from the falling dripstone as it crushes down behind you killing everything in its path <laughs> Whenever you're ready, though, off you go. Any tips? Any any uh, recommendations? Oh, goodness. I mean, there's a lot of tips on the ceiling, um, so avoid those. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Off you go. Oh. Just don't stop. Whoa. Oh, don't no. Don't stop either. Okay. Oh, Here they're behind comes. me. I can hear them. It's coming. Oh, man. They're fast. They're, they're fast. Well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh-oh. You are uh -oh. safe. Uh-oh. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You made it! <laughs> you were there. Sorry, I should have told you. You can exit the boat when you get to the end that of the That was a key point um, I, I missed. I was looking at F5 yeah. and I thought I was just missing the spot, so... <laughs> yeah, it's like when uh, someone teaches you to ride a bike and they forget to teach you how to use the brake. Right, whenever you're ready. All right, so you added some <laughs> delay on the, the pop-ups too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pop-ups should hopefully pop up less often so as as we get near to them it's going to suddenly pop up but the timings might be terrible and then we're both dead or it's going to be perfect and then just me i'm dead apparently <laughs> <laughs> well you're going first if anybody all right let's do it go for it uh... oh, oh but easy oh. oh it does make it harder it definitely makes it harder oh the timing was pretty good actually Oh, nice. There you go. Oh, we got a pretty good path as well. Take, oh, Ethan, they're coming. The scenic route. They're coming, Ethan. The spikes. All right, there oh, we go. go. <laughs> if you run up the pressure plate, jump onto the gravel. Perfect. Look at that. It's <laughs> so cool. Oh, man. How do I even say that? Ethuwu? Is that what it is? Ethuwu. <laughs> Sounds so wrong. Uh, this is a little hard to explain. I made a deal with Joe Hills the other day. He's been taking down mountains. He's got endless stone and cobblestone. And we have the mossy cobblestone and stone permit. And I don't want him giving it away to the other hermits. I want to sell it to the other hermits, right? So 
I cut him in on part of the deal. I think I'm going to pay him two diamonds for each of these shulkers, which uh, I don't have because I'm broke. <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure that out uh, for next episode somehow because I think he's waiting for payment now. Um, but yeah, that's that's what the deal is with this. Okay, we're at the, the shopping district again. I got thinking we got to work on our shops here. Okay, so here's the deal. We're not selling any glass. It's terrible. It's It's hopeless even. What do we do about that? Oh, let's check our uh, profits again. Oh, we're selling a little bit more. Okay, good. I think what it comes down to is we got to upgrade from our trash heap shop. This was only supposed to be here for a day, honestly. <laughs> I just left it for a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, some of the hermits have pointed out, you know, maybe I should try a little harder. Uh, maybe it's not quite good enough. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to upgrade to not the permanent shop. We're going to do like a proper pop-up shop for it. For our glass stuff and take it from there so we still got to get in contact with the other hermits that have the other glass permits and build a shop all together kind of thing so we just want something simple clean looking and effective right so i'm thinking we go like get some andesite to highlight it right we get this going around we will put our shulker boxes like right here full of glass. So we're just going to do a weird stair pattern thing here. We're, we're trying to make it look like futuristic almost. Okay, so if this is the light blue glass shop, what we're going to do is put light blue glass here. Do like a two by two cube. Make it look like a giant glass block, right? And then we will put some end rods underneath that. Make it look like it's holding it up and they'll light up the glass, make it really stand out. And that is our shop. <laughs> oh, I don't know about this. Uh, honestly, I was hoping it'd look a little cooler than it does. Uh, but it's fine, right? It's fine. It's a temporary shop. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to tear it down very soon, I'm sure. But yeah, I just uh, tried to randomly change the heights and positions around to scatter them. And then we have our supplies in the shulker boxes. Each one's color code to the color of the glass. We got it. Two diamonds per stack written on the shulker box. B-dubs. Whoa, <laughs> you're in, you're inside? I, I was waiting for you. I decided to uh, just walk in, you know. That's so rude. You brought the horse in? <laughs> does, does he not belong in here? A horse has never been I saw the hay bales in, in here. I thought it was like, uh. No, that's a carpet. <laughs> out, out. Not horse food? Out. Okay. No, okay. okay. I know there's a lot of things you got to yell at me about. Okay, number one. You're gonna, first of all, you're looking around, you're like, how does this guy get anything done? What, no beacons and clearing land? And, and what, how, what's this storage system? Uh, and I I'll, understand. I'll be honest, I've been that way with you my whole life, B-dubs. I honestly okay. don't know what you do in this game, but you Dude, somehow make makes beautiful stuff happen. Do you want to see my storage right now? Uh, sure, I'd love to. Come look at this. Come, this is my storage system. So, and I know where it is. <laughs> everything is so there's this what's in this one without right? looking in that one without looking is that is like some plant stuff mm -hmm. um just random like plant stuff Very and impressive. some animal stuff and drops and stuff yeah yes. yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you got your big furnace array over here got my furnace array yep yep Very and, nice. then, and then this is where it gets kind of crazy this is where you start um, uh, going into scar territory a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little except bit I know monster. where everything is. Um, copper, right here. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, snap. I actually came here to for a favor. I was I was going to compliment you, actually, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's do that. So I'm always really impressed with what BWO does with his shops on Hermitcraft. We're going to use it as our model, our example of what to follow with our own shops, I think. And I've broken it down to four main things we got to copy. All right. So first of all, BWO always makes his shops look really good. You want your shops to look good. You want your, the other hermits to be like, wow, did you see... Did you see that frog light shop Etho built? It looks so nice. And then they show it off in the video because they're really impressed and it looks cool and kind of like I'm doing right now with his with BW's bamboo shop. <laughs> uh -huh, so that's important. Number two, advertising. You you want to have some way of advertising your shop. So BW he went for the sign technique here. Big bold signs in front of his shop to try to pull people in, get them to go to his store. So every shop we build, we got to think of some kind of advertising strategy. With our frog light shop, we're going to get Impulse, uh, you know, he's our spokesman. He's going to tell people about it. It's going to be great. We're going to try that out. Uh, but also number three, the shop needs to be functional. First and foremost, 
You know, when it comes down to it, the whole reason we have these shops on Hermitcraft is so that if another hermit needs something, uh, they can just quickly come down to the shopping district, pick it up, and they don't get sidetracked for hours trying to collect resources on a project they're working on uh, when they're in the middle of it, you know? <laughs> uh huh. And uh, fourth, uh, this is the thing I especially like with BWO shops, is he always adds some kind of game or gimmick or some way of interacting with the shop beyond just like purchasing stuff. Some fun thing. So with his bamboo shop here, he added this game to show, try to prove that scaffolding is actually faster than using dirt so that people will buy scaffolding from his shop. All right. <laughs> the, the game goes like this. You pick your block of choice, okay, uh -huh. that you like to stack up with. You stack to the top, ring the bell, and then remove the pillar and ring the bottom bell. Once you ring the bottom bell, that's it. Three, <sighs> okay. Two. Wait, he's getting a head start. He's getting a head start, Cleo. What is <laughs> okay, this? Okay, okay, okay. I'll stand back here. On the, I'll rim, stand back on the rim, B-dubs. On the rim. Get off the okay. sand. What is this? Yeah, okay. Get on the rim, B-dubs. Come okay, on. Okay, on the rim. On the rim. Three, two, one, go. Oh, snap. Oh, man, I missed it. I'm up. I'm up. Oh, somebody told me a way to do it. Wait, how close am I? Oh, I went way too high. Uh oh. I broke the bell. <laughs> uh, and I win. <laughs> you didn't ring the top one. You didn't ring the bell, he does. <laughs> oh, some yeah. idiot. You know yeah. what? The amount of comments I got on my last episode where people were saying, oh, you should do this. Don't you know you can do that? And I just tried when one of the stupid commenters said, and it's worse. I... You added the trap door later, didn't you? No, no. They said go in it and start stacking up, but that doesn't work fast. That's slow. Okay, I'm not quite sold on okay. the scaffolding just yet, Beatups. Let's try one Sorry. more time, I think. One more time. One more time. One more time. I'm going to do it my way. All right. Okay. You show them, Beatups. Okay. Shouldn't have been that trap door up there, but that's I, I fine. I'll tell you what, okay. Beatups, you can, you can have a head start. Okay. You go on two. I don't need a head start. I'm going to go at the same time. All right, here we go. You're going to love scaffolding after this. Sure. Sounds mm -hmm. like it. Three, two, one, go. Stacking. Okay, he, he got those down pretty fast. And that should be enough. Wait, he's not climbing though yet. Oh, he am is. I not? Oh, I went way too high. How do you ring a bell? Wait, got what? It. Got to ring it on the side. <laughs> what? Got him. <laughs> got him. <laughs> it's a... Oh. Okay, that was pretty fast, speed ups. Um, six, six seconds faster. Fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, because side of the hitbox. Yeah. Because even if you aim high on that, it doesn't work. You have to go lower. Weird. Oh. Like even if you're on the correct face of the like where the hitbox is, it doesn't always ring. Oh, weird. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And here oh, I go. Oh. B-dubs has the height. Hey! No cheating! <laughs> That's the way to do it. No! <laughs> oh, it. no, it's a disaster. <laughs> Who said put that trap door there? <laughs> it's gone again. It's the worst. Okay, I'm fixing the trap door. Man, this is, this is good. This is bug testing. Man! Uh, well, I was really impressed with the game beat-ups. Now I'm, I'm having second thoughts on it, actually. <laughs> I enjoyed it quite a lot. Do you want the bell? Okay. It might have a couple of flaws. Etho, you ready? I'm ready. Gotta do a sprout. And also, if you put a block on top of his scaffolding, it'll just absolutely... Just no, wreck some. No, um, do not. <laughs> do not. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go. Go. You're not gonna sleep, beat-ups? You're not gonna sleep. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. You wanna play? Let's play break. Let's play breaking blocks. Ouch! All right, here I go. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going for real. No! <laughs> Who pushed me this way? Cleo's Fine, helping us, dude. Oh, I Watch. still can't do Cleo! the bell. Oh, I got the bell. I got the bell. <laughs> Cleo, stop! Yeah! My whole business relies on this, you guys. <laughs> This is my primary sales tactic. I feel like the scaffolding is like open to trolling. Someone just comes along and <laughs> yeah. breaks it from underneath you all the time, right? Three, two, one, go. Oh, with a running oh. start, running jump start. This one's an easy one. This is an oh, easy one. Oh, he's gaining on you, Scar. 
Okay, start that with the first hit. It's, me, it's the way me. down that matters. Oh, wait, no, oh go my down goodness, down. he does it. Yeah. No, I yeah. call it do over. You jumped off the scaffolding. That's exactly right, I did. Because you can't do that with dirt, but with scaffolding, you can. You just sold your sold it to yourself. Now you wow. can see. Wow. I'm glad I bought my scaffolding now. Yes, yes, yes. Have some. <laughs> here. B-dubs convinced me. We're going to add it to our system as well. All right, everybody. Well, that was a lot of fun, but uh, here's the deal. I've been trying to figure out what do we do with our frog light shop ever since I got it. And I've been struggling because I want to do something fun, something interesting. And I saw B-double-O do his uh, game there, and it, it really, it hit me, finally. <laughs> we gotta do a game as well. And I was, I was trying to think of what kind of game we could do. I think I got a great idea now. We're gonna make Frogger. Uh-huh, Frog Light Shop, Frogger. <laughs> you know, I love Frogger, guys. I think it was 12 years ago, like a long, long time ago, I tried to make a Frogger game in vanilla Minecraft, which didn't turn out too well. I've done it in modded Minecraft as well. Which turned out a little bit better, but it was crazy complicated. I think I have a, a nice, simple way of doing it in vanilla. Using Ravagers in minecarts. Aha. Uh -huh. They're going to be our vehicles. Uh, I got to build a road for them. So that's what the basalt is for here. I don't think anybody is selling uh, basalt in the shopping district. So I have to make my own here. And this is a little bit goofy. I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to work. <laughs> we'll find out. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> That's right. I got to put uh, obsidian by the pistons or they're going to move. Let's give it another go here. You're supposed to build these in the nether so the lava flows faster, but... Uh... Oh, did I brick it? Oh, no, I got to actually mine it now, I think. Okay, let's see how fast this is. Okay, it's not full speed. Struggling to make... Uh... Basalt now. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we gotta play with the timings, I think. Uh, let's head to the back here. So, what do we want? Slower, maybe? Okay, we're close, but it's skipping every odd cycle now. Interesting. Okay, we got four cycles in a row. And then it stops for three, I think, or four. Uh, this might take me a while to tweak. How much are we at? Oh, we got enough. Okay, let's go build it. Man, I did it again, didn't I? <laughs> it's another 50-minute episode. Oh, I haven't improved at all. Okay, we're just going to have to introduce the idea today. Maybe I'll build the road real quick just to give you a feel for what it's going to look like. But we'll have to get more into it next time. So let's just talk about the plan here. Uh, at the shopping district, I think we're going to put our frog light shop around here up against this hill. I marked it with the four uh, corners of uh, scaffolding, okay? So it's gonna be a standard shop. You know, you come in, you exchange diamonds for frog lights, you get out. If anybody's in a hurry, I want them to have that option. But if they're looking for something more fun, something exciting, we're gonna also offer the Frogger mini game in the basement, okay? And I think we'll, we'll have like a Frogger arcade game at the back of the shop. You put a diamond block in it, if I can build it, if I can make something that looks like that, uh, that would be awesome. We throw a, a diamond block in the arcade machine, and then it drops you down to a room where you drop off your stuff. You set your spawn. Once you do that, you drop down again into the actual Frogger game down below. Now, speaking from experience, this isn't my first time trying to make Frogger in Minecraft. Um, we got to be careful not to get bogged down into the details of trying to make a perfect clone of the game. Uh, it's going to be very similar, but we're going to take a, a couple liberties. You know, I don't want to add a life system, for example. I think you just get one life. You either make it or you don't. And uh, if you die, you go back to your bed with your stuff, and you can play again if you want, or you can get out of the shop kind of thing. Um, so that'll simplify things a lot. We also... Mm, I think we want to make it so you get rewarded based on your performance so the better you do in the game the more frog lights will get rewarded and on average we're gonna want to make it so you get more than if you just buy them at the shop as well so like, let's say an average player does an average game we probably want to give them like one and a half to two times more frog lights than if they just bought it for diamonds at the shop kind of thing just to encourage people to play and i think we'll do something like this right that looks pr pretty decent i think 
Now we're going to add a uh, deep slate and other texture into the road. We're just trying to get the basic shape figured out, laid out here. So yeah, the thing is we're going to have to get some ravagers, probably about 10 to 15 ravagers. We're going to have them going around on mine carts. So they will be every four blocks, I believe is what we're aiming for. So rail one, two, three rail, one, two, three rail is how we'll have the ravagers. And we'll zigzag them through the road so that they're always in use kind of thing. And not just sitting around. That way we don't need as many of them. And then above the rails, we will have gray carpets. See how that looks. Just so that the, the minecart's hidden away that the Ravager's riding in. And we'll probably aim for the standard, you know, five lanes of road, five lanes of water, five frogs at the end. We can actually use real frogs from Minecraft to represent the five frogs at the end. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we'll get more into it next episode, and hopefully we can get it working. Maybe get some hermits to help us test it. If we if we do that, it's going to be really cool. But that's going to have to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one, take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. I bought this new microphone one time and I bought a mic stand with it. The mic stand didn't work very well. So just as a temporary solution, I stuffed the mic in a Kleenex box as a holder. <laughs> and it works surprisingly <laughs> well. So well, in fact, it dampens the, sh the sound and everything from the desk and it's wonderful. I decided just to stick with it. Uh, I also play with my keyboard about two, 16, 18 inches uh <laughs> up at the desk so that i have room for my arms i like to keep my elbows on the desk kind of like when you're eating and stuff um you shouldn't I, eat with your elbows on the desk either. yeah that's rude that canada? <laughs> it's very comfortable actually my elbows are on the desk so it might run in canada <laughs> <laughs> this allows you to keep your wrist perfectly straight with your mouse because i keep my mouse also sideways so in front of my keyboard <laughs> instead of off on the side of it. So, so, I use so wait, it. when are so you done? I need a Q&A. You... How old is the Kleenex box? It's about five years old or so. I got my settings <laughs> written on it. Is it there still tissues in it? Do they want a sponsorship? The tissues that... help to absorb the sound, Do they make iron Mongo. boxes? <laughs> five years for I'm a Kleenex box. Down. That's impressive. It's a Costco yeah. box. A nice big beefy one. It matches my desk, same color. It looks nice. I've got one on my desk and it's flimsy. <laughs> How have you done this? We need a new category, is what I we think, need. I think you need to Take go right to the very end, though. buddy. Yeah. Top I'm, I'm not Especially done yet. I'm not done yet. So, because I play with my mouse in front of my keyboard <laughs> sideways, right? Um, I only have about 16 inches or so to move it. So, I have high sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pretty nice desktop though, so I play without my mouse pad, mm -hmm. so it's, it glides nicer, smoother, mm -hmm. and instead I use nice. my mouse pad under my left elbow as a cushion. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. Just I think that's about it. Okay, yeah, get to the end, mate. There's no way. Yeah, no, 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 no